You know, there was a man during the time of the Prophet. So I want you to picture this. He's the companion of the Prophet, which means he probably prayed with the Prophet. He fought alongside the Prophet in the battlefields. He's on his deathbed. He's a young man. The Prophet ﷺ comes to his deathbed. What an honor, right? You're on your deathbed, you know, if you're in the hospital, you're excited if a regular scholar comes and visits you. Imagine, you're on your deathbed and Rasulullah comes to see you. The Prophet sits beside him and he says to him, قُلْ لَا إِلَهَ إِلَّا اللَّهِ Say, there is no God but Allah. He's not able to speak. فَاعْتَقَلَ لِسَانُهُ He's not able to speak. And the Prophet, being a, a spiritual physician, he knows why this is happening. He knows when someone can't speak because of a physical ailment, and he knows when someone can't speak because of a spiritual disease. Immediately, the Prophet ﷺ, he says to him, هل هذا أم? Does he have a mother? SubhanAllah. The Prophet doesn't say, does he have a father? The Prophet could look at him and he could tell that this is what happens when someone mistreats their mother. Specifically the mother. Talk about diagnosing the illness with precision. He says, هل هذا أم? Does this young man have a mother? Rasulullah hears a female voice behind him. She says, نعم يا رسول الله, أنا أمه. I'm his mother. She was in there in the same room. The Prophet asks her, Are you angry with him? Are you upset with him? She says, Yes, Ya Rasulullah. She says, Ma kallamtuhu mundu sitti hijaj. I have not spoken to him in six years. You know, we're shocked. But believe me, there are people that get into arguments with their parents and they don't talk to them for 16 years, right? And you may think that, oh, sometimes I get into an argument with my mom or my dad and I, I just don't talk to them for a week. Yeah, that's, what if Malakul Mawt comes to you that week? Is that how you want to meet Allah? So the Prophet ﷺ, he tells the mother, Forgive him. Be pleased with him. Even the Prophet he, he doesn't make dua for him. He knows, the Prophet knows that I can't even help you unless your mother forgives you. Imagine that. He says, forgive him. So this woman, she was very pious. She says, Radiyallahu anhu bi ridaka ya Rasulullah. For your sake, ya Rasulullah, I'll forgive him. The Prophet then sits beside this man. You know, he's dying. He's gasping. He says to him, repeat after me. Ya man yaqbalu al-yaseer wa yahfu an al-kathir. Oh, the one who accepts the little that we offer. Because brothers and sisters, anything we do in life, it's qaleel. It's yaseer. Ya man yaqbalu al-yaseer Oh, the one who accepts the small good deeds that we offer. He accepts it from us. And he pardons the kathir, the many sins that we commit. Accept the little that I offer you, O oh Allah, and forgive the many sins that I have committed. We have to be careful, brothers and sisters, because this young man, he was a companion of the Prophet. None of us were companions of the Prophet. This was a man who prayed with Rasulullah. None, no, none of us can say that we prayed jama'ah with a ma'asum. We can't say that. He fought alongside the Prophet in battle. But even Rasulullah was not able to help him until his mother forgave him.